Hello everyone and welcome back to Fun with Fitzy. We are on the last video of chapter 13, my favorite chapter. And we're going to be liquidating a partnership. And you've often gone around, I'm sure, and seen stores with signs on them saying liquidation sale. Uh, well, what they're saying is the, closes, the store is closing and they're selling all of their assets. Uh, and usually for less than market value. So the liquidation of a partnership terminates the business. And there are several steps that you need, to, you need to take in order to do this. So here they are. The first step is to sell your assets for cash and recognize any gain or loss on the realization. So for example, if you have a uh, automobile and it's worth $10,000, the net book value in your books and you sell it for $12,000, well, you just had a gain and that's going to be a revenue that you have to recognize at this time. The second step then is to allocate that gain or loss on realization to the partners based on their income ratios. For that $2,000 that we just gained, we're going to split them among the partners based on their ratio. So remember if the partners have a 3 to 2 ratio, then this partner will get 3 fifths and this partner will get 2 fifths. The third step is to pay all liabilities in cash and finally distribute the remaining cash to the partners based on their capital balances. So two real key things here. Step two is to allocate the gain or loss on based on income ratios and at the end when you're going to give the cash to the partners basically what you're going to end up doing is giving them what their balance is in their capital. Okay so whatever their balance is in their capital you're just going to give them because all the assets are sold all you'll have is cash and capital balances. Okay, let's look at an example of liquidation of a partnership. Suppose John Paul, Michelle Francis, and Ralph Long have the following assets. They have cash, automobile, building, and land. The liabilities for the partnership as follows. They owe 10000 in accounts payable. That's it. And the capital structure of the partnership as follows. John Paul has $25,000 in capital at this point. Michelle has 50000 in capital at this point, and Ralph Wong has 50000 as well. Okay? All profits and loss will be allocated as follows. So here's the income sharing ratio, 20, 40, 40. Okay, so it's a 2 to 4 to 4 ratio. Okay, so we're going to do one example in this video, and then we'll save the other for the class time. Suppose that on July 1st, the partnership sold all of its assets to Dominion College for $50,000. Because remember, uh, the steps of liquidation are to sell assets, and it's non-cash assets, of course, because you, you can't sell your cash. It doesn't make sense. And then the second step is recognize if there's a gain or loss on sale and then allocate that, that gain or loss, to the partners based on their ratio, pay off your debts, so to pay off liabilities, and then distribute money to the partners. So we're in, every one of these steps requires a journal entry, basically. So basically it says on July 1st they sold their assets to Dominion College for $50,000. So the first one is going to be cash is gone up $50,000 and we're going to credit all of our assets. Auto, building, and land. Now you'll remember from chapter 10 how to recognize a, a loss or a, a gain on the sale of an asset. So this is just the same thing that we did in chapter 10. So in this particular case we had $85,000 worth of assets and we sold them for $50,000. So we have a loss of $35,000. And as you remember, a loss is an expense, so we're going to debit it. We know in our journal entries are debits, must always equal our credits. So that's the journal entry to recognize the sale. Now we're going to allocate, these are both kind of together. Now we're going to allocate that loss to the partners based on their income sharing ratio. So two, four, four. So he gets two tenths, he gets four tenths, and he gets four tenths, or 20%, 40%, and 40%. So 40% of that loss and 20% of that loss is going to be put into this. 
when you allocate a loss, you're going to debit their capital accounts. If it's a gain, you're going to credit their capital gain. So loss, debit, capital, and a gain, you credit capital. That just makes sense, right? When you want capital to increase, you credit it. When, you, when it goes down, you debit it. So we're going to take that loss on sale of $35,000. We're going to credit it. So now that account is cleared. And now we're going to decrease their accounts by their income sharing ratios of that amount. So 20% for John Paul, 20% of 35 is 7,000. 40% of 35 is 14. And it's the same thing there. So that's our second journal entry. Now the third thing that we need to do is pay our debts. We have accounts payable of $10,000. So we're gonna pay all of our accounts payables. So accounts payable, debit, 10,000, credit, cash. Straightforward, we've been doing this since grade 11. And then finally, we're going to distribute the money to the partners based on their income. So now it's gonna be really important there's a journal entry here, but I'm going to show you how we're going to get this, these amounts. So it's really important to make a T account. So let's see if I can do that. So we have John Paul. We had Michelle Francois, I think her name was, and Ralph Wong. So I'm going to make my pen skinnier here. So at the beginning of this whole thing, John Paul had 25, 50, and 50. That's what their capital balances were. So 25, 50, and 50. It's really important to keep track of this as you go along. So in our first journal entry, we didn't do anything with their capital accounts. In the second journal entry, we debited John Paul by 7,000. And we debited Michelle by 14. And we debited Ralph by 14. Why don't we keep track of our cash account too while we're at it? At the beginning, we had $50,000 in cash. And then in that first transaction, in that first transaction, we debited again by another 50,000. Okay, and then here we paid off our accounts payable, so cash went down another 10,000. Oops. Cash went down another 10,000. So easy just to make a mistake. And at the end, we're going to distribute this based on their capital balances. So if we see how much cash we have here, we have $90,000. And 25 take away 7 is 18, so he has $18,000. 50 take away 14 is 36. And 50 take away 14 is 36. So all I've done is made the T accounts and for cash and capital and posted all of these transactions into them to see what we have. So at the end of the day here, we have $90,000 in cash, and John Paul, Michelle, Francois, and Ralph Wong have 18,036 and 36 respectively. So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna credit cash by 90,000 because you want this account to go to a zero balance. Basically, we're closing all of our accounts so that there's no more partnership. And John Paul's capital is going to be debited by 18, so that's how he gets zero. This one's going to be debited by 36, so that's how it gets to zero. This one's going to be debited by 36, and that's how it gets to zero. And here's a transaction to show how that happens. And John Paul's going to walk away with $18,000 cash. Michelle Francois is going to walk away with $36,000 cash. And Ralph Wong is going to walk away with $36,000 cash. So it's pretty straightforward if you follow the, four, the steps. There's actually four steps, but I turn them into five here. The first two are one. So we'll do another transact, we'll do another example of that in class. So by now you should be able to liquidate a partnership and prepare all of the journal entries. Remember there's the four steps and a journal entry for each step. And thanks for watching. Hope this helped.